Welcome to the Clyde Auditorium, uh, nicknamed and known locally as the Armadillo, for day two of the 2014 Weightlifting Championships of the Commonwealth Games. I'm David Goldstrom, alongside me, Commonwealth Games champion Jeannie Lassen, and we're looking forward in this first competition of the day, the men's 62 kilos. The entry, uh, a big one. So what they've done is to divide it into two parts, a and B, and we're about to set out on a journey with the athletes in the B division. Athletes who, if they perform to the max, or even better, may well figure highly in the ranking overall when the A final, the men who've entered the higher totals, takes place, as you can see from the menu, a little later in the day. But all of these men will be trying to exceed their personal bests, and to achieve their best ever Commonwealth Games performance. For weightlifting, of course, in the Commonwealth Games, like all the sports, your opportunity once every four years to become a Commonwealth Games champion. Well, enough of me for the moment. Uh, here are the men lining up, and we're going to introduce them to you. But first of all, a very good morning to Jeannie. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, Jeannie, uh, 62 kilo men competition, always mega competitive. That's right, there's a lot of depth in this field. Nine athletes in the B category, that's a very big group. Yeah, this is 62 kilos, uh, or 136 and a half pounds, or nine and three quarter stones, however you like to count your money, wherever you are in the world. And by the way, thank you to all of you for being with us. Uh, I know for some of you it's the late evening, early hours of the morning, uh, but you're very welcome and we really appreciate your company here. There's a great shot of the Clyde Auditorium filling up really nicely. Atmosphere was terrific. It was India's day yesterday, but today it could all change. As the weight categories get heavier by the day, things will change. Other nations will start to come into prominence. And there is the uh, weightlifting stage with a four meter square platform set in the middle. And when you lift, you must lift and uh, contain your lift on that stage. And there, the 20 kilo bar for the men being put center stage there by the loaders who have a really, really big task here. They've got to be accurate, they've got to be quick, uh, but above all, they've got to get uh, everything absolutely spot on for each and every lifter. That's right, there's nothing worse than having a bar misloaded in a high competition like this. So this is the B group, and if I rewind a little bit, this is a, a group which has ha seen some great lifters over the time, and we have a, a lifter in this group from Nauru, and the man who really put Nauru on the map, Marcus Stephen, not once, but twice a Commonwealth Games champion for Nauru, who went on to be president of his country from 2007 to 2011. And it's tiny, the country. I think it's just 12 kilometers or so round. And uh, it's just found weightlifting. And it's really, in sporting terms, put it on the world map. It sure has. Yes, uh, the other day at the opening ceremonies, it was an athlete from Nauru, weightlifter from Nauru, that was carrying the flag into the opening ceremonies. Formerly from Armenia, but you can see on the bottom there, Yurik Sarkassian, he holds the snatch record of 125 kilos from Kuala Lumpur. And there is Marcus Steven. He's still the record holder for the clean and jerk at 167, and his total still prevails. There you can see it on the bottom there, 292 kilos. Well, you're not going to see that broken in this session, and you may not see it broken in tonight's session, because the name of the game in these big multi-sport championships in every sport pretty well is win the medal, and then if you've done that and you've got the chance, then you go for the record. That's right, medals first, record second. And this is really a great mixture of uh, the Commonwealth here. Ghana, Seychelles, Nigeria, Nauru, Wales, England, Uganda, Australia, Solomon Islands. And here is uh, Daniel Darko, representing Ghana, and he is their team weightlifting captain. He was in the Commonwealth Games in 
Delhi, and the next man in his first games, uh, Rick Confiance from the Seychelles. Next man representing Nigeria, the man who won the Commonwealth Championships, which is an annual competition last November in Penang, King Kalu, representing Nigeria. And for uh, Nauru, Elson Brexefeld at the New Caledonia Institute for Weightlifting. Gareth Evans representing Wales, although he was actually born in Dundee. And at the age of 12, he was Britain's strongest schoolboy. Representing England, uh, just one, Shergill, the English champion, a young man who's been juggling his studies and graduation with weightlifting, never easy. And then representing the Uganda, so Charles uh, Sekayaya. And he was 14th in the Commonwealth Games four years ago in Delhi. Banara Bey, sister, who will be also in action today, a little later on in the women's 53 kilo final. Banara Bey, top 10 four years ago in Delhi. And the Solomon Islands represented. This is Brown Ramo Haka. Big cheer for him, the 26-year-old Solomon Islands, of course, Africa's smallest state. And there are your contenders in the first competition of the day. A few nerves there, eager to get on with it. They weighed in uh, just under two hours ago, yeah, and they since then been resting, rehydrating, and getting ready for their big moment of these Please championships. The well, you've met the Group contenders. B. Now meet the ladies and gentlemen who must make every decision 100% right. The technical controllers, the referees, the jury, and as ever, even more of them than we have in terms of competitors. That's right, it takes a lot of people to make a competition run smoothly. The centre referee from Canada, Jocelyn Moe. Very important, the, the central referee, she gets the best Nigeria, view of both arms in case of press outs. The best view in the house, and really. From New Zealand, Cassidy really important job, and they are very conscious of making the right decisions. Yes, it's a lot of pressure. You don't want that crowd turned against you, and you don't want the athletes turning against you. Yeah, this sport isn't like football, where, oh, maybe it was offside, or maybe it was a tug of the shirt. This has to be, was there a press out or wasn't there a press out? It has to be absolutely 100% right or 100% wrong. That's correct. From Australia, Philip Monda. And from Scotland, John McNiven. The doctors on duty. From Germany, Dr. Dominic Durr. Hopefully we will not need his services, Dominic Durr, the doctor and on duty. From Tonga, Dr. Lissimoni Kami. Yeah, so and far we haven't seen anything nasty and that's the way we hope to keep things. So off the stage they go. The boys are already into their warm-up phase. They've got just under eight minutes before the first of the lifters is going to be uh, called forward here. And just looking at one or two of the opening weights here, um, Daniel Darko for uh, Ghana has posted an 83 kilo start. And I think he's probably going to be the first person onto the stage. And following him will probably be Brown Ramakaka from the Solomon Islands, who uh, first got a first lift there of 95, I think it is. That's correct. So what will likely happen for Daniel Darko is he will have three attempts, one after the other, which means he'll have two minutes because he'll be following himself between each lift. In the jury, you saw the president there, Gary Marshall, made a really good call yesterday 
uh, when they did the one over rule of the day on a press out, got it absolutely right. They never like to do it, they never like to overrule the referee, but again, just to emphasize, they are there to make sure that every athlete gets the right result. That's correct, and it's really important to note that this is not a jury of appeal, so they all make a decision, they all weigh in on each lift as well, and if they have a decision that's different than the, the referees, that's when things change. Yeah, gone are the days, thank goodness, of the haranguing sessions where coaches would come up and try to almost intimidate the jury, and so they change the whole situation of the rules now, and if a coach was to do that, they run the risk of disqualification of themselves from the competition not their lifter but themselves they can have their accreditation taken away from them and coaches are very very important especially in competition and training you may be able to do it on your own but in competition it is impossible to do your warm-up and try to play the poker chess game at the same time so here's Daniel Darko and you can see there already got a kind of 25 Kilo weights on either side of the bar, so he's well into his warm up. That's right, so he has 25 kilograms on each side of the bar as well as the 20 kilo bar itself. So it's very important to add up all of those components. That means he's got 70 kilos, not the 25 kilos alone that most people think when they see one side on the bar. Yeah, he's a man with a personal best of 85, so you can see how close he was to already thinking about coming out on stage for his first attempt. That's right, most athletes will do 95 to 100% of their starting attempt in the back warm-up room. And that's how you use up your energy if you weren't with us yesterday. Just to emphasize, imagine that you've got a full tank of petrol and you're going on a journey and uh, you uh, take the risk of going a little bit too far and running out of gas. That's right, but if you don't use the gas, you don't warm up the engine and you're not ready when you come out onto the stage, so it's a very fine balance of finding that right yeah, recipe. And, and somehow, because you have three snatch attempts and three clean and jerk attempts, what you really want to do is to manage that energy so that when you come to that very last clean and jerk attempt, which may be the difference between your personal best or even a medal, that you've got it inside you to deliver that big moment. That's right. Uh, Jeannie, um, here we are, you know, the uh, clock ticking forward now, just uh, here we are at uh, about eight minutes past ten in the morning. These guys will have had the opportunity to start weighing in at ten o'clock, so an early start for them. Um, so how will they have been filling these uh, intermediate two hours? I mean, everyone has their own personal routine, uh, as we saw. Some of them were lying down in the rest area on uh, massage tables with blankets over them, pretending to sleep or trying to sleep. Others were laughing with their coaches in the relaxation lounge. Everyone has their own preference, but definitely they're trying to get closer and closer to that perfect optimal zone where you can really dig deep and get the most out of yourself. Yeah, once they've weighed in, they've got uh, the opportunity to rehydrate, take on a little bit of food, not too much. That's right, it's a challenge. Most people walk around a couple kilos, maybe three kilos heavier than they compete at, so they've definitely done some dieting, probably had to skip some water this morning, so they're likely hungry and thirsty. But the big thing is you don't want to eat too much and weigh yourself down. You need to be ready to lift, you need to be well fueled. Gareth Evans there, flexing and stretching. Yeah, and a lot of the guys, actually, uh, they might just have, as you say, a little something, and then they'll go to the rest bench area where they can chill out and actually preserve all the energy. That's right. Gareth is a good example of an athlete who used to be in a heavier weight class. He previously competed as a 69 kilo, actually, at the Olympic Olympics. In 2012, he was 69, and now he's chosen to go into the lighter weight class and hopefully become more competitive. So, you are gonna have just to under three Close minutes to go ready. to the first lifter. There's the English challenger. This is Jaswant Shegil, but everybody calls him Jazz. And really nice lad. Uh, got into uh, weightlifting uh, around about the age of 12. And uh, he's only 21 now, but the big relief for him is the fact that he's got his exams and dissertation out the way. Really difficult. I mean, Jeannie, you know how difficult that is to try and juggle, you know, serious studies as well as a, a as your major sport. That's right, and your body doesn't know the difference between stress from lifting and stress from exams, so it does tax you, and it's very difficult to be putting yourself through that a month out from the game. 
any competitors standing out for you? Would one look a bit stronger than the other? Yeah, representing uh, Nigeria, King Kalu. And uh, representing uh, Ghana. It's going to be, I think, the first man to come out is going to be Daniel uh, Darko. Just looking at the uh, opening uh, weights here. I think Daniel Darko is going to be our first man onto the stage, and that's indicated. He's uh, posted 83 kilos as his opening attempt. Now, of course, it depends on how your warm-up goes. If it's good, you might push it up a little bit. That's right, but already he uh, mentioned earlier that his personal best was 85 kilograms. If that's true and he's starting at 83, he's already going with quite a gutsy move, just two kil kilograms below his best lift. I will be really surprised if he goes heavier, but you know, he might be hiding something. He might have done a lot more than 85 in training. So everybody's settling down. So wherever you are in the Commonwealth, sit back and relax and enjoy the action with Jeannie Lassen and myself, David Goldstrom, as now we look forward to the first man coming out on stage to Start setting the targets. This is our Solomon athlete, our Solomon Islands athlete, sorry. He knows that he has three attempts before him before he goes out on the platform, so he will be closing in on his last lift right now in the warm up. So, just having a look uh, down the uh, entry totals here. Well, the man from Nauru, that's uh, Elson uh, Brechtenfeld, 260. Uh, one of the higher totals uh, from the Ugandan, Charles uh, Sekeyaya, 264. The Australian, uh, Vanara Bay, 262. Those are the headliners in this particular category. But it is uh, Daniel Darko to get us underway. And uh, coached there by the prof. And that is Carl Pierce. A uh, bit of a legend. You know him extremely well. Hails from Shreveport, Louisiana. And he's got involved with the Ghanaian team only in the last couple of months. But he's loving it. Yes, he's very excited to be here. And perhaps that is what Daniel Darko's secret is and why his training is going so well, is having that guidance from Kyle Pierce. Yeah, it's quite a story because he, he he lectures, he educates, he encourages. He found himself there doing just that. Then they asked him to be a selector. And then he, they said, well, would you mind being the coach as well? He's got a great, a great energy about him. Kyle's awesome at both inspiring and motivating and keeping athletes calm and in, in focus. Yeah, five men and three women in the... Ghanaian weightlifting team and a really good welcome for the Ghanaian and he's coming out at his announced weight of 83 kilos so just two kilos short of that personal best so he's got every chance of setting a new mark for himself first man of the morning locking on That's a very easy lift. Very solid first attempt, very smooth Good technique. Lift. As you would expect. Yeah, that's how you want to start your competition. It really is a, a pretty straightforward rule that the first attempt should be, and usually is, a weight that you've done a zillion million times. That's right, but the trick is to come out and perform that under pressure on a platform you've never lifted on before. I always say the first lift is like the first pancake. It might be a bit sloppy and unusable, but that was actually pretty close to perfect. Arms accurately locked out there. No question of a press out, nice start. And where he is in the pecking order of this particular competition, it means that he looks as if he's gonna have to follow himself here. Because if I look up on the board there, I think 95 kilos is the next weight that's required. Actually, they've only put it up a kilo. Now they will put that up more than that. That's correct. So there's an automatic one kilogram increment. There's a change. The lifter wants and more. then you have Lowers to change within the first 30 seconds. 
of the cloth if you'd like to change it again. Now, 85 is being flagged. Um, interesting. I mean, it's a, a two kilo increase. I was beginning to think that, you know, probably if I was going for the second attempt, I'd be looking to at least go three kilos to 86 and break, break his personal best on the second attempt and then go for the, you know, the glory third attempt. I would have to agree with you on that three kilo jump and perhaps it, it may still happen because you are allowed two changes after that first one kilogram increment. Yeah, just to give the loaders something to do. That's right, give the loaders something to do, <laughs> add to the drama and the suspense in the audience. Yeah, but the clock is still running. It looks like he's actually going to come out. Oh. Now, of course, a lot of the uh, favorite guys are in their warm-up routine backstage. And indeed, the bar going up to 86. We're happy that they listen to us. That's right. So it looks to us like they missed that 30-second window, but it really only has to be announced to the marshals in the area behind the scenes in the first 30 seconds. And if he succeeds, he'll set a new national record for Ghana comes from Accra and was 20th in the Commonwealth Games in Delhi. But he's 28 years of age now, so very mature. And coming out for a national record. So he's got 45 seconds, just a little bit less than that, so he's not on a under any pressure in that regard. Thirty second buzzer. That's nice. a great solid lift. National record on a second attempt. You don't see that often. Yeah, and as you said, uh, cobwebs came off after the first attempt. That was actually more fluent. Uh, and he had that little bit of extra confidence. And he also knew that he had to keep the fire in there to attack and be aggressive to get that second attempt. That's right, and he still has a third attempt where he can break his record by even more. It's very rare that athletes break national records in international competitions because you have to think they're traveling a long way, there's jet lag, there's unfamiliar environment, there's a whole lot of things going against you but he managed to do it on a second attempt. Pretty nice, the feet in line and steady as they must be for part of the rules. Waits for the put down signal to avoid being disqualified. Uh, if you put the bar down before the down signal, you lose the lift. Yeah, and that's a really hard way to miss a lift. Getting it over your head, having it at arm's length and then letting go too soon. So now he's a happy chappy. Uh, you know, one of his markers has been achieved. Of course, the bar goes up that standard kilo it's going to have gone up to 88 now okay can he can he go 89 could he could he go 90. i think he's going to go with 88 i think that he's going to make it and it's going to be even easier than that last one because he now has nothing to lose question is how much he and how much the coaches want to push him want him to ask the question here uh, because there's another absolutely straight. This is not a man who's going to be involved in the medal chase. Perfectly obvious. He's got his own personal targets here. So no shame in that. 89. We're going in the right direction here. Like this. So three kilo increase again for the third and final attempt. Got bags of time. Kyle's out there with him. Kyle's really looking to build leadership in Ghana and having an athlete come out and do three solid lifts, three successful lifts as the first athlete out on the platform is a great way to start the program. Yeah, the Ghanaians, they've fashioned somehow a new permanent facility with I think six platforms. That's right, no longer training in a storage container. So, three for three. New national record, new personal best. Would be a great start to the morning. He's taking a little longer in the setup. He has the time. Coming down to that 30 second buzzer. Might want to get that out of the way. That's an awesome 
start to the day. What a Solid great. lift, room for more. Great little series, well done. Ghanaian team captain does his job. Now, he can go back, sit down for a while before starting his clean and jerk preparation. And the competition now moves on. And the bar will move up from 89 to 95 kilos. And this is for the appearance of Brown Ramohaka representing the Solomon Islands. He's one of our lighter athletes, weighing it at under 61 kilos. So the heaviest athlete in this class was actually 61.9 and the lightest was 60.39. So you see that everyone is very close to that 62 kilo marker. Solomon Islands, east of Papua New Guinea, northwest of Wanwantu. And uh, you'll see athletes from those two countries as well before our week is done. And it's a population of about half a million in the Solomon Islands. But again, under Paul Coffer and the Institute of Weightlifting in New Caledonia, all these islands now are involved. They're involved in the sport locally. They're involved by athletes qualifying, graduating at the New Caledonia Institute, which has got about 20 male lifters there. And they're also involved in competition by way of Skype. Yes, this is awesome. I mean, the coach was saying earlier, they've only got two platforms, but they've got four athletes here on the team from the Solomon Islands and a popula population of only half a million. That's pretty good statistics. You know, that's some serious athletic talent. Now, the jury and the referees are having a little chat here. Not sure what this is about. It's a serious looking Gary Marshall there, the president of the jury. I can assure you those uh, lifts of Daniel Darko, they stand, no question about those. No, there's no question. Those were some amazing lifts. This is a challenge for the athlete, though, who was mentally ready to go attack the bar and now is standing yeah. behind in the wings. Yeah, I always think we should have a little microphone down there, you know, just to uh, hear what you know. we do that in the worlds. Uh, and, the, and the Europeans to just hear what you know the subject of the conversation is, not to eavesdrop, and then it fades out for the rest of the time. But when there's an issue, we can hear what it is, which is always intriguing. It is intriguing. <laughs> well, you know, like so many sports, you know, now we hear the referee, so why not hear the president of the well, jury? We're waiting for the jury, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you've been very good so far, pushing uh, our... So 95 kilos and this little hold up for uh, Brown, an unwelcome one. Comes from uh, Honiara, which is the capital, and it, like so many of the athletes, has to uh, combine his life with a job. He's uh, a builder by trade. And building is a, is a, is a job that goes really well with weightlifting because that's what you're doing every day. You're building the foundation to your athletic performance in the future. Very easy to see the return on investment when you're doing weightlifting. Okay, I've been informed we can resume the competition. So therefore, we have 95 kilograms on the barbell for Brown Ramahaka from the Solomon Islands. Well, I'm not quite sure what all this uh, conflab was about there, but there's a little bit of toing and froing around the secretariat desk. Uh, but as you rightly said, not to the advantage of the athlete, but here's the man that matters. Really marching on to some purpose, over to the magnesium. Straight down there. He's got 40 seconds. Boy. No problem. What about that? that I'm, not, I'm not messing around. That weight did not affect him. He was ready, and he looks like he's ready for much more. I'm thinking at least a five kilo jump there. So he starts right on his personal best. Absolutely. I mean, that's as fast as you'll see anybody live. Not in two ways. First approach, second execution. And that bar just flew off the floor. And he was quite high when he caught that bar. You can see that he's not in a full squat position. So there's room for more. I mean, that's motorway speed. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> something we all wish we could do. <laughs> Terrific mental application. Yes, that was intense focus. And the bar has gone up five kilos. And... This looks as if it's going to be the first appearance of Rick Confiance. And again, coming in only five kilos uh, short of his 
personal best in what is his first appearance at the Commonwealth Games, representing the Seychelles, 155 islands in the Indian Ocean, never been there, always wanted to. Yes. Zanzibar to the west, Mauritius to the south, the smallest African state. Weighed in at 61.70, so one of the heavier athletes in this class. A very different approach than the last athlete we saw. Much more calm. Only 20. Just a little balance lost there. Very solid on the way up. Very flexible. Really good if we see the feet here because of the rock back on the feet. Lost that platform. That's right, just a bit too much weight into the heels. Well, Brown comes on once again to some purpose. This is Ramohaka, 100 kilos, and he's lit up this auditorium. He is in the zone. <laughs> Boom. It, you don't do a lift easier than that on a platform in a competition. It's impossible. And unfortunately for the Seychelles athlete, there's not much time in between lifts. That, that happened in about 30 seconds all in all. He's going to come out here a little bit tired after his last lift. And you can see there, he does the job on the stage, but he whips off there and there's high fives from Team Brown all around. <laughs> or should I say uh, Team Ramahaka. <laughs> What's really impressive about this athlete is he started at 16 years old. That's a late age to start Olympic weightlifting. So a little boost from the audience here for this young man from the Seychelles. Confiance. Well, let's hope he's got the confidence to go with his uh, family name. Needs to be positive about this. 100 kilos on the bar, second attempt. Let's see, almost out to the extension of the bar here, his hands. That's better. That's better. Yeah, the precision was there, and the firefighter, because that's his day job, he's on his way. He's looking a little frustrated, though, just because of having lost that first attempt. He's only got one more chance to improve on his best lift. Yeah, but you know well, Jeannie, you know, when you have a setback like that, you have to stop thinking about that first failure. I've done 100, let's move it forward. That's right. Mentally, you just have to wipe that straight out. It's he something we have to work on all the time in our sport. You know, because he was probably thinking in his mind, OK, I'm going to go 100, 105, maybe 110. That's right. You know? So you have to let go of that idea of 110 and refocus, set a new goal, and go after it. He was definitely after a personal best here, which is 105. He's got a choice now. He's put 105 on the bar. You're looking at the uh, English contender there, Jazz. But uh, will he go 106 on his third and final attempt? That's uh, Rick Confiance uh, from the Seychelles, just to at least get a personal best here. Kilograms now. 105 kilograms for King Nkalu from Nigeria. A man with a great name, uh, King Kalu, the Commonwealth champion of last November in Penang in Malaysia. Only 18 years of age. Works full time, although uh, has been studying economics. And he found out about weightlifting by watching the Olympics way back in 2004 when he was just eight years old. That's what inspired him to become an Olympic weightlifter. Yeah, he's still a junior. That title that he won in Penang was actually you know, the Junior Commonwealth Championships. And uh, on that occasion, totaled up 250. 
and that was made up from 110 kilos in this first discipline. So 105, really straightforward. Very easy. Good 110 will probably be his next lift, and I suspect it will be equally easy. That's what we like to see. We like to see lots of white around the scoreboard for good lifts. That's Although our scoreboard seems to be a little bit more multicolored, we got green for good and red for bad. <laughs> Yellow for yet to come. Yep, yeah. So Elson uh, Brechtefeld coming on at 105 kilos. Just having a, a little look there. This is the weight he posted, so we can assume that his warm up has gone. What? really well this is a young man who has qualified to be part of that new caledonian squad again just a little balance lost on the heels there sending the weight forward to try to overcompensate to try to compensate sorry and unfortunately a miss but he's under the guidance of Paul Coffa, so there's no doubt he'll come back solid and make that lift. Again, 20 years of age, still a junior. So a big cheer for the first appearance of uh, England's contender, Jaswant uh, Shergild, in his first Commonwealth Games, in his first multi-sport championship and 105 kilos on the bar. He has a personal best of 110, which he achieved this year. to his hips and he just dives under, catches solidly. That is an amazing range of motion. Tall guy, long levers. That's right, tall guy, long levers. He's not built like his competitors. Maybe his advantage could be in this first part. We'll have to wait and see just how strong he can be in the clean and jerk. That's right, he has a lot further to lift that bar than his competitors do. So there's the 105 kilograms remains locus, thank you. His dad, Rupinda, was the man who persuaded him at the age of 12 to get involved. His dad wasn't a competitive weightlifter, but really enjoyed the sport. And Rupinda, you know, following in those footsteps, was the 12th in the junior worlds last season in Lima, in Peru. So yeah, still very early in his career. We have our Neri Wathley coming back for a second attempt at 105. He looks like he's coming out here with a purpose in the zone, ready to go. His best lift is 115, so this should be no problem for him. Just a little hiccup on that first lift. There we go. That was amazing. Very easy first lift. Well, it should have been a first lift, sorry. Should, should have been the first. <laughs> That's what he should have done first time. Again, he just limits his ambitions. So, you know, Paul Copper, they've got to make a decision amongst themselves where they want to go for the third attempt. That's right. They may choose to do the bar they originally had planned for a third attempt, or they may go to what they had originally had as a second attempt. So, Brown Ramohaka straight onto the stage here. Now, remember, this man's personal best was 95. Ooh. Come on, come on, come on. That elbow, I'm not sure. 105 on the bar. No, uh, unfortunately. So, we'll see this in the replay here. 
That's that right elbow. He did have quite a weight between his second and third weight. It was a very clear press out. And all three referees red lighting him. And you do see that he got a lot deeper in that lift than he did with his other two attempts. And I'm just wondering, you know, in his career, whether this is something he's going to have to learn to adapt. Yeah, it's funny coming on, lifting the one that you've done a zillion times, and even the second one. But when it comes to the third one, where you're really beginning to push yourself, maybe you just need a little bit more patience. Perhaps, yeah, maybe he needs a little more time to set up, a little more time to focus. You have to adjust the circumstance. You do. The thing that, the reason athletes rush themselves usually is they don't want to give themselves time to, time to think. Once you start thinking, that's when you can start doubting. Rick Confiance, 106 kilos. So, um... That's what I suggested he should do, put the extra kilo on to break his personal best. It's a good suggestion. I hope he can do it. Oh, well, I think he might. I think he might. He's done 105, so come on. Fifteen seconds. Oh, that oh, saved. That, that was a great save. <laughs> Again, found himself on his heels just like that first attempt, but this time was able to keep it. 106 and a PB. I mean, the fact is that, you know, they hoped if you remember, to get the 100 on the first attempt. And I'm sure that they had more than 106 planned in their mind for that third attempt. But they had to adapt, and so at least he's got the PB. That's right. Still great to get a PB in an international competition. Now, hopefully, he hasn't looked the most cheery of souls. But hopefully that will have given him a, a nice little boost going into the second half. You ever been to the Seychelles? No, but in, uh, back in the 90s when I was a junior athlete, they were supposed to host the Junior Worlds and at the last minute it fell through, but I was very motivated and I was training very hard to get there. So Charles Sekiaya, 108 on the bar. Opening attempt. That was a very easy first lift, and you can see the weight even fell on him a bit. He caught it quite high and went down lower than he needed to to secure that lift. That means there's room for a lot more. Four brothers in the family, and a good start there for the man who lives in the capital, Kampala, where when he's not training and he's not working either as a gym instructor or as a carpenter, he likes a game of pool. But we'll see more of him, and the bar goes to 109 kilos. That's up the statutory kilo for him and just looking at who's going to come out uh, next. Who wants 109 kilos? Well, at the moment, nobody. And in fact, uh, the man from Uganda has put his bar up to 112 for the second attempt and 109 kilos for the man from Nauru, Elson uh, Brexefeld. Third attempt. had to adapt uh, his what? personal best is 115 but he hasn't been able to get there that's right the competition plans changed but he still needs this lift to stay in the game ah! 
One out of three. Disappointing first half. No lift. That's right, 10 kilos under his personal best. He's going to have to make up for that in the clean and jerk. And raise the bar well to 110 kilograms. 110 kilograms for Gareth Evans from Wales. First attempt. Well, there's going to be a big cheer for the Welshman Gareth Evans. Lifter to follow is B. So as a 69 kilo athlete, Gareth Evans did 130, I believe, at the snatch. But losing that seven kilos of body weight really changes what you're able to do. And he's gone up, uh, Gareth Evans, to 115. So already a little exhibition of the chess game. We've not got to the high poker stakes yet, but it's Banara Bay. Representing Australia to come out on a first attempt of 100, 110 kilos, 10 kilos short of his personal best. Member of the famous Hawthorne Club down in Australia. That's a great starting lift. And in the corner, Yurik Sakasian, the Commonwealth Games record holder for the snatch. Desi is on the right of your picture. Also training, trained out of Hawthorne as well. I, I tell you, we've seen a few Aussies. They look awfully well prepared. Yes, they're looking very strong. He's not a man of many words, uh, Vanara Bay. Likes to have a kip when he doesn't have to do anything. <laughs> That's right. Actually, was very fortunate to train with him down in Hawthorne previous to the Melbourne Commonwealth Games. So, second attempt here for King Kalu representing Nigeria. Opened up on 105, got that. So, this is a five kilo increase, and this is his personal best. And I'm ooh. not sure about that right, that left elbow, sorry. No lift. Very Again, powerful. Lost the balance, Again, lost control. That's right. This is such a precise uh, lift. A couple of centimeters is the difference so, uh, between success and failure. And he'll, he'll kick himself for this. Now that's that's a waste. That's a very sad way to miss a lift, you know, getting it to arm's length, but not having that arm locked out right away. So here comes Jazz, Jaswan Shergill. Although he lives at Birmingham, his university studies have been at Coventry. So the bar's at 110. He's right on his personal best. This is his second attempt, so do this jazz and then you can go further. Nicely done. That is very impressive. He's very efficient lifter. You can see he gets that bar to exactly where it needs to be. Little punch there, just showing fire in the belly. Yes, he gets under that bar so fast and so solid. I'm really impressed with this athlete, very impressed. Yeah, you can really see the, the grit, the focus. Yes, that is very, very strong mental attack of the bar. Now, I'm not suggesting any of you at home should do this, but you might play with the broomstick and just put that over your head and just imagine uh, now putting 110 kilos on it. You know, it takes guts to put that bar over your head. That's right, to be as low as possible with weight over your head. It's not a comfortable position. But if you want to lift heavyweights, that's what you got to do. 
your head for the Ladies and gentlemen, the hashtag 2014 And one or two of you can perhaps think about these weights, you know, uh, sofas, fridges. You know, we're, it, it's those sort of weights that these guys are lifting, and in fact, more. That's right, but if you ask any of these athletes to help you move house, they probably won't want to because moving fridges and, and sofas <laughs> is a lot more dangerous than moving these weights, actually. It's a lot harder to control that weight. Now, come on, King Kalu. Let's forget about that bit of silliness on the second attempt. Now, this will be equaling up to his personal best again. Do you know, I'm sure he can manage the weight. I just wish they'd have put an extra kilo on and go one, one, one. Yes, I like when people do those gutsy moves and add a kilo after a missed yeah. lift. I think the, the strength is there. This time it might be the left elbow. Good spot there. Uh, but it is a two to one decision. I. I just uh, look over to see whether there is any there. motion from the jury. There seems to be someone on the phone. Yeah, that's the president of the jury. That's uh, Jerry Marshall. Uh, so there is a stop on the competition for evaluation. Again, this happens from time to time. They're there to monitor the whole competition. So they will be speaking with the referees. At the moment, it's still a good lift, but referees are up at the desk, as you can see. And it's the referees who gave a white that have been called forward. One, in fact, uh, it's the one, yeah. The two, the two referees who gave a good lift are being asked the question now they can stand their ground that's right they may have not seen the press out they may not have been looking at that elbow and that little hand language there means a reversal and just waiting for that to be executed it has been executed and I'm afraid uh, two the, rather uh, expensive mistakes King there by King Kalu, and it leaves him only on 105 kilos. Very disappointing for him. He had the power to do much more than 110, but unfortunately, precision is very important in the snatch portion of this competition. So England's Jaswan Tshegu coming out now to go for a new personal best. 112 kilos on the bar for three out of three. The question is, does he have enough power to go with that efficiency in, in order to be able to succeed in this lift? There's every chance he's lifted this weight in the training hall, but he might not have been at this body weight but it's completely different when you come out onto the competition stage. Here we go. So close. No this athlete is so strong mentally. I'm, I'm so impressed. I know I've said it already, but watching people lift like that it's amazing. It's very inspiring to see someone just throw themselves under the bar. So brave. So he's equaled his season's best. He's equaled his personal best with the 110. Tried the 112, didn't come off. But 110, still, you know, he's got the chance. He set a new personal best in the clean and jerk. Maybe that's where he can find a couple of extra kilos as well. That's right, and he needs to come out of the snatch very motivated by how hard he tried. He did everything in his power to make that lift. It didn't work out. Trying to walk around didn't work for him. It's but he can more, be very proud. Much more understanding when you, you miss a third attempt. That's right. It's the first one that's the killer. Yes. You come out and you throw the first one away. Horrible. Hard to recover.
Now, second attempt at 113 kilos for the Ugandan. In picture. The barbell is set for Charles Sechaya, Uganda, 113 kilograms, second attempt, lifted to five. Charles Sechaya, here he comes. One thirteen. So he's still three kilos short of his personal best, but if he makes this, he's got the opportunity to go into new territory. Takes a little look at the clock, sees that he's got twenty seconds, settles. It's a great second attempt. He's had quite a wait since his first attempt. Nice He's smile. All smiles, yes. Yeah, enjoying himself, which is important. Raise the barbell to 100. I think that kilograms. smiling and being lighthearted is the most important thing in order to have success in competition. Second attempt. Some coaches will disagree. I've been given trouble for smiling before. And you know, that was a five kilo increase. These guys weighed in. At uh, well, they are 62 kilo lifters, so you know, bo double body weight. Uh, what are we talking? 124. We're not a million miles away. No, we're getting close. Now, Vanara Bay for the Aussies. He's got a personal best of 120. Opened up successfully on 110. So four kilos more on the bar for this second effort. It's a great catch position. See, he was very patient in the bottom, got his balance, stood up. Excellent lift. And he's doing this with economy. Now this is important because it's still early stages in the competition. So the more economical he can be with his energy now, the more he's gonna have left later. That's right. Really go after that big total in the clean and jerk. So he's setting himself up kilo by kilo here in the snatch. Evans has gone up. So well, Gareth Evans and uh, the Welsh coaching team, are they playing some games? Because they've gone up to uh, 118 kilos. Now that's eight kilos up on what they originally posted. So they're actually not messing around with the others at the moment. Uh, it just tells you that their warm-up obviously has gone rather well. That's right, Gareth is in great shape. Yeah, he seemed really perky when we had a chat with him earlier on, um, just after the he weigh in. Technical marshal's desk here, coaches filling in their next attempts for their lifters. He's gone up as well, so therefore it's a change of call. 116 kilograms of So, Bevanara going up there. Mr. Sarkassian saying we'll go for 116. A lot of jockeying happening right now, and it's really difficult when you're an athlete in the back and you hear your name called, you think maybe it's you. Oh, stop the clock, it's someone else. It's a lot of nerves. Gareth Evans, of course, is the only lifter who has not begun his challenge. So he will be last to start, and here comes the Aussie. So this is only a two kilo increase, so uh, this is a very controlled performance here. You know, 120 is his personal best, so clearly they don't feel that he's got that within him at the moment. Or they're playing a very conservative game right now. Well, there it is. Very consistent with his technique. 
again, caught it very low, a little off balance, but he was patient and was able to stand up with it. Very successful lift. Yeah, you, you two guys were having a little chat, weren't you, about your early years. And um, it, in a funny sort of way, it was a way of getting out of your house and not doing the washing up to go to the gym. <laughs> that's right. He used uh, weightlifting as a way to get out of school, and I used it as a way to get out of chores. And you know, that's what happens when you're 12 years old and you start a sport. There's not always logic involved. Or long-term planning, I guess. Yeah. Mind you, you know, when you go to the gym, you end up by working harder than... Exactly. <laughs> Much harder to do that two hours of training than 20 minutes of dishes. Great audience. I mean, you know, this is... Well, it's pretty early in the day. Still a working day here in Glasgow. The city centre is just buzzing. Weather's great again today. Sunshine. Now, is the sun going to shine for 117 kilos here? Four kilo increase. This for three out of three. The momentum of the bar just... That's right, he didn't quite get that extension he wanted. This is the difficulty, trying to get as tall as you can with the bar getting as high as possible before going under the weight. He went under a little too soon, didn't finish that pull. Yeah, it leaves him on that... Uh, 118 kilograms. 113. Pity that four kilos would have been really important. Uh, I say that because Gareth Evans, just about to come out now for Wales on 118, would have kept him sort of close-ish. That's right, and it would have been a lot more of a tight competition at the time of the clean and jerk. Now, Gareth's got a personal best of 115, so uh, no mucking around, coming out straight here. He's uh, a man who also has to earn his living. He's a painter and direct, uh, decorator, but for the last 10 weeks, it's been total weightlifting. That definitely gives a performance a boost. Got a young daughter, six years of age, and she's not here to see her dad. She's down having holiday in Spain. So they've been doing Facebook. <laughs> Facebook and FaceTime. Yeah. Hopefully she's tuned into this on the internet. Confident start. Well, he's enjoyed that, hasn't he? That is an awesome way to start. Pretty great feeling to be the last athlete to start a competition. Strongest athlete. And, you know, he's the only man left in the first section of the competition, so he's got two attempts in his own time. He can go where he wants to. This is amazing. Well, he's not going to take 119 kilos. He's not going to take a... They're just discussing this now. Ray over on the far side, his coach, and he did uh, four years ago when he finished 12th in the Commonwealth Games, uh, 111, 135 for a 246 total, and here, albeit in the uh, B division, he's looking for 
255 and more. So what he really wants here is three out of three. That's right. He said that he went up to the 69 kilo class for the Olympics because the more he trained, he was training full time, the more the muscle mass just went on. And he snatched 130 kilos. And now, although he's lighter, he still has that confidence. He still knows he has done 130 in the past. So 120 is not an intimidating number. No, but again, uh, methinks looking at the 118 here, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd like to have seen at least another kilo, 121. And then the third attempt might be the more conservative one, you know? That's right. Who knows what they have planned? But these two, Ray on the left, Gareth on the right there, they know each other so well. You know, he, he's in Hollyhead at Ray's gym. That's where they work out. That's, you know, so this isn't a question of a coach imposing. This is an agreement between the two. Fired up. Let's just use some smelling salts there. Yeah. Still 45 seconds, so he's not troubled by time. Now, looks forward, has his point of focus. Now goes into his head. The visualization marches forward. Settles. Locks on. Legs, 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 legs. Legs, legs, legs. He's saying legs to himself. Little internal cue. So close, just a little in front. You can't ha hold on to weights like that when they're not exactly where they need to be. Yeah. I still stand by my 121, actually. Uh, but, you know, hey, I'm sitting up here nice and comfortable. I don't have to do this. Uh, but he does. They obviously felt 120 was right. So I guess he's got to come out and do 120 now. That's right, unless he does that gutsy move where he goes a kilo more despite having a miss. Yeah, but 118 he's got. Um, what does that put him? He's two kilos ahead of Banara Bay in second place. This would put him four kilos clear. So he actually has two coaches with him in the back, and one was his PE teacher back in secondary. Yeah, he was the guy that actually uh, got him into this. That's right. He was playing soccer, football, you guys call it? Yeah. And uh, said, leave the cleats off. I'm going to show you how to clean and jerk. And Gareth, at the start of his career, weighed in at 28 kilos. So just a bit more than the empty bar. Yeah. Britain's strongest schoolboy at 12. That was lifting weight. I bet, bet there'd be a few 12-year-olds who'd take issue with that. <laughs> That's right. I'm really curious to see how much he lifted at that 28-kilogram body weight. Because, of course, Weightlifting is kilo for kilo that matters. So when you are 28 kilos, you do have a slight advantage. Yeah, the school's competitions uh, in this country, really important part of weightlifting, part of the step ladder. That's right. We had something in Canada that was just the power clean. So from the floor to the shoulders, it was a great way to get people involved in the sport. So as you can hear around, plenty of support for the Welshman, the man who was born in Dundee. Now. This is the last lift of the snatch portion of today's competition. You know he's motivated to get this for the crowd. But of course, still all the clean and jerks to follow. Second discipline. So. Really must make this. Oh. I thought he had that one, and he clearly thought he had it as well. It was at arm's length just again, a couple centimeters too far to the front. That isn't anything about strength. That's all about technique. 
It's all about timing as well. So you know that could be the weight loss that's coming into play there. When you're an athlete as lean as Gareth, losing three kilograms changes the way your body feels when you're lifting. Well, you can feel that in your technique. In uh, you could just see there on the feet there, a good picture, and, and you could just see you rock back onto the heels. That's right. So the boys are into half time, and this is the state of play. Gareth Evans for Wales has a two kilo call on Banana Bay of uh, Australia. Then five kilos off the pace there, the man from Uganda. And uh, you can see these men here. Uh, They've got quite a lot of kilos, over 10 kilos uh, off the leader. And Darko there, well, he may be at the bottom, but three great attempts, new personal best, wonderful little series. Hats off to him. That's a great way for Ghana to start the competition. And it's not an unfamiliar situation, Jeannie, is it? You know, right across all sports, you know, people go into... Uh, all sorts of sports to do their best and you know they at various stages in their career they know the reality is that they're not going to get to the podium so you set yourself a target that's right there's only three people that get onto that podium so you have to plan long term and take the steps necessary to come you know to maybe your second or third commonwealth games as a medal hopeful a two-tier auditorium here, and as you saw there, uh, a lot of the athletes have privileged seats so that they can enjoy the competition. Down beneath us, there's another view of uh, what they can see. And then we've got a really good house above and around us here on the uh, what they call the uh, front circle. And the cheap seats at the Ladies back there, the, uh, the, the upper circle, well, there's a few. And former Commonwealth champion, we have the 2006 Commonwealth champion, Michaela Brees from Wales. And Michaela Brees is here in the house right now, talking with the live from the audience commentator. The crowd's pretty excited to see a champion here in the audience. You retired, but you're coming back. It seems like a sensible thing to do. And I guess I've set up my own gym, and my main reason for coming back was to try and inspire other people to have a go at the sport. And I brought along Christy Williams, who's going to be competing tomorrow in the B group. Um, and I guess one thing I need to for another, I've been trained for about nine months, and going on tomorrow. Awesome, so you're competing tomorrow, and you have one of your athletes competing tomorrow. Are you going to be involved in coaching up, or are you solely concentrating on yourself tomorrow? Well, I'm afraid Christy, I'm going to have to focus on myself. Um, she's in good hands. I mean, you've got Ray and Simon out the back now with Gareth. They're going to be looking after Christy tomorrow morning, and I'm going to be shouting at you from the crowd. Sounds awesome. Now, you've got a tough group. You've got Zoe Smith from England. You're competing against her. She got a medal in Delhi. She got the bronze medal, I believe. Um, how do you think you can do against Zoe? Well, I think we're both under some pressure. I think we're both going to go out there and do our best. I'm focusing myself, I'm not worried about the goats, and I think you know, it's, it's going to be a good competition. Uh, youth versus experience, um, but you know, we'll see what, we'll see what happens. I'm looking forward to the game on. Awesome, now you can relax today, and you're obviously cheering the Welsh man, Gareth Evans. How did you think, what, what did you think of his lifts? It was a gutsy performance. I thought that he was going to come out with 115, come out with 118, great lifting. Yeah, just taking in Michaela Breeze's uh, thoughts and words here. She'll be on the stage tomorrow in what is one of the hottest matchups for the host country. Michaela Breeze, Commonwealth Games champion in Melbourne in 2006, same year as you. That's right. Uh, I've known Michaela for a long, long time. New hairstyle. Their new hairstyle, yes. I haven't known her with this hairstyle. This is definitely new. Well, I haven't seen her for a couple of months, uh, so I know this This is definitely a, a new hairstyle for the Commonwealth Games. Great thing about Michaela is I think in the matchup tomorrow against Zoe Smith, it's fascinating. 
because Michaela's 35, Zoe's 20, but also Michaela's strength often is in the snatch, the first discipline, and I think she's going to have to build Kilo's advantage over Zoe, who I think will come back at her in the clean and the jerk. Which way will it go? Who knows? This lady, Michaela Breeze, is really, really gutsy. She's very gutsy. I've always admired that about her. And as she said, youth versus experience. There's going to be actually two groups tomorrow, so there's a yeah. new session at 12.30, uh, I believe. That group has been split, the, uh, and tickets are still available for that one. The Breezy so Gym, they'll all tomorrow. be uh, to looking forward to her progress tomorrow. Sure I really like what she said about coming back to inspire some people to take up the sport. That's awesome, and I really appreciate that she's doing this for our sport. Yeah. For much of her weightlifting career, she had to... Uh, manage her school teaching life as well as uh, her weightlifting as well that's right and as we all know uh, being a school teacher is not easy it's a lot of energy giving so working with kids all day and then going and trying to work with the weights it's, it's not any easy task at all so Vanara Bay there in uh, deep conversation that's right Anthony is his coach in Hawthorne so they're definitely talking about their game plan right now Talking about inspiration, you know, this is what it's all about, you know. Great multi-sport competitions such as the Commonwealth Games. It's a, a window which brings sports such as weightlifting to young boys and girls. And you just can't tell how many of these might just be, you know, I went to the Clyde Auditorium, I saw, you know, and I want to try that. That's right. I think that's a very important thing to remember. You know, athletes often are inspired by the sports they see on the TV in their home nation most often. You know, in Canada, it's hockey. All we see is hockey all the time. But when you have a chance to see a multi-sport games, you, your, your eyes are open to things you never even considered before. For myself, I never grew up wanting to be a weightlifter. All of a sudden, it just happened to be at my high school, and so I gave it a try. So, you know, you have to be open to all these different sports that you may not have thought of. And... And there's a lot of choice out there. There is a lot of choice out there. Mind you. I mean, weightlifting is the best choice, no question, but... <laughs> yeah, but there's very few uh, weightlifters who got very, very rich in uh, their time. Oh, you can't do sport for money. you got to do it for love, David. I talked to uh, Mr. Suleiman Oglu about that. There's one or two. There's a handful. Piras Dimas, great lifter in his time. Halil Mutlu, uh, uh, Suleiman Oglu, they were all men who hit the financial jackpot. The financial jackpot, I mean, very few people will ever hit that in life, in any, in any area. But I think the main thing is, you know, when you pick up a sport like weightlifting, you have a reason to get up in the morning, push yourself, set goals, and see what you're capable of. I think the good thing now is that more and more federations have understood, these are weightlifting federations, the necessity to actually uh, parallel education at the same time as the sport, so that for those people who go into the sport, prepared to dedicate and give it their whole commitment to it, that when they come out of the sport, uh, whether they've been successful or not, they have an education and a career that they can look forward to, to moving forward. Once upon a time, there was absolutely nothing. It was, you did weightlifting, 25, 26 years of age, and you didn't know where to go or what to do. Uh, and it's, it's a good policy now that's happening. That's right. I mean, sport is really a finite amount of time. You can't do weightlifting forever. You don't see athletes in their 40s still uh, lifting at world championships and winning medals. So, you know, take those few years, do the best you can, and then later you can make money, hopefully with that uh, career you've built for yourself through schooling. So, just a reminder, we're about to commence the second part of this competition, the clean and jerk discipline. And Gareth Evans from Wales, only one out of three, but with one, one, eight kilos achieved, he leads the field into the second half of the competition.
so. Just a reminder that it is uh, Gareth Evans from Wales, 118 Vanara B on 116. And then in third place at the moment, it's uh, Charles Sekaya of uh, Uganda, who's in third spot on 113. So five kilos separating the top three in the 62 kilo B division. And, and we will know later today how their ultimate totals will figure in the overall ranking for this bodyweight group. That's right, the athletes in these in this category are really trying to get their name as high on the leaderboard as possible going into the A session. So, here's the man who did three out of three. He is the weightlifting captain for Ghana, and his name is Daniel Darko. He holds all the national records. He's already smashed the snatch, snatch, snatch national record, and he's now about to try to do the same for the clean and jerk. And the clean and jerk national record in Ghana is 110 kilos. He won't start on that, but he looks as if he's going for 104, and that's a kilo up on just double check that on the announced weights yeah that is a kilo up on what he announced earlier so confidence from the first half good warm-up now 104 kilos all he needs to do is get to 111 to set a new national record easier said than done and there you can see the hands locking on much narrower, more in line with the shoulders for the heavier weight. A very easy clean, cut that quite high. And a solid jerk. Well, it was two to one, and I was looking at the left uh, elbow there. So we have 105 kilograms. Interesting to have a look at the replay here. Two to one is uh, good enough now. Let's have a look at this. Is there a question? So Daniel Darko doesn't have a very strong lockout. Maybe it's the size of his biceps that make it look like he's not locking out. I'm very happy with that lift and. I'm very glad that it's been given. Now, because he's the man who starts with the lightest weight, it, it's a situation that he's got a couple of minutes to gather himself together. Two kilos gone on the bar here. Again, you know, I think this is... Uh, an underestimate. I think they're going to put this up. Where would you go on this? I would go. Um, I would certainly go 107. I might be tempted to go 108. I would go. I like five kilo jumps myself, so oh, I would go, go 109. 109. Yes, there was a lot of room in that clean, especially. So I, and again, first lift is always a little shakier than the second, just because of the uh, nerves of being on the platform for the first time. 107 kilograms now on the barbell loaders. Okay. Well, so <laughs> that's the three kilos that I was looking for, but who knows? Kyle Pierce on the far side there. They're just uh, filling in the adjustment there. They're still at the table. Lift the once more again. Loaders, 108 kilograms on the barbell. Uh, well, neither of us got it exactly right, but we Split both know eight. Yeah. I, I, I think this is fine. Four kilos, very good. And then he, he needs three more to break the clean and jerk national record of Ghana. Yeah, that's a very good uh, competition plan. I'm sure Kyle's right on board with this. So, 
well into the second half of the competition. Remember, he's used a lot of warm-up lifts as well, which have taken energy out of his body. So as economical as possible. The clean, by its name, means clean, easy. Get it up on the shoulders with as little fuss as possible. Went a little deeper in that clean. Trouble. Two, to, two to one. Two to one. That's all it takes is two white lights. And he's got them. Jory, pretty motionless. So look at this. One kilograms to 109 kilograms. No, he's not going to take book chat. Carl's very good here. You, you can see how he's involving everybody in the decision making process. He's using his wisdom and experience now. Arms. Let's look at this. I've seen it given, I've seen it not given. It's a hard call. I think he's got to go 111. Stop the clock, the left of one small, 110 kilograms. 110 kilograms. All the time, of course, the clock stops. So it just gives him a little bit more time. He's got Good. 10 seconds and one more change. Yep. So the clock stops on 139, but he's actually gaining 15, 20 seconds while the loaders are doing their stuff. That's right, and adding to the drama. Oh, they're going to go for this, no question. This is, this is just management. Carl comes back. Yeah, and I think this is, the, I wouldn't push this any further. I'd just do the 1-1-1. One, one, one. That's right. I think they're all out of changes anyway. And uh, this will be quite interesting because he took 108. So this is a three kilo increase. He's on 197 as a total. So this would be a really nice 200, round 200 kilos. Yeah, that's a... You know, a big barrier when you're an athlete, you first time you do 50 kilograms in total, it's a big deal. And then the 100 is the one you're shooting for. And then, you know, 200 is a big number for any athlete. And if he does the 200, then he's five kilos up on his personal best. And uh, he's also absolutely smack on his entry total. So. Can he do it? And, and also, six out of six. That's what he's uh, looking for here. He's got five. The elusive six out of six. Not many athletes ever get to experience it. We actually have six out of six clubs in some parts of Canada. Now he's got to be very clear in his mind. 20 seconds. Still needs that aggression. He's got to bring everything into this. Mind and body. Four seconds. Must move this. Move, move, move. Come on. He's going to be... Oh. It went out of his head and he's been timed out. Time has been called. He... He was, he was lost there. And what happened was he was in the mental process and the, the clock beat him. That's right. You have to have that bar moving past your knees by the time that buzzer runs out. And he just missed it. Uh, maybe he needed a bigger shout from the coach there at about 10 seconds out. It's very hard to hear anybody once you're on the platform. So he finishes on uh, 197. He has the consolation of a new snatch personal best and national record, but that's just very unfortunate. Yeah, that is hands down the worst way to miss a lift is the clock running out on you. And it was all in the head. The whole sport is in the head. Doesn't matter how strong you are. Or in his case, not in the head. <laughs> So we move on, and the bar 
moves right up to 125 kilos. And this is five kilos uh, short of uh, Rick Confiance's personal best. So, 125 to add to... It was 106 he got in the end. In the snatch phase, that's what he brings forward into the second half. So this for 231. 14 seconds. Coach's heart rate going up all the time. It's an easy clean. A couple of steps forward, he's right on the front of the platform. But he just eases back to put the bar no, 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 down no, 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 on the platform. No, Two to one decision, there we go. He did not make that lift easy for himself. However, you can see when he finished his clean, stood up for the jerk, he left his feet quite wide, wasn't very stable, and that's what led to trouble in the jerk. Two thirty one. Jury are happy. They've left it as it is. Now have a look at this. Giant step forward. It was a giant step forward <laughs> to get his head in front of his elbows. That's where you want it to be in order to be the most stable. Still, actually, technically those feet are not a hundred percent in line. No, they weren't actually. But that very difficult to see from the angle the the referees are at compared to us. Well, they've actually been lifted up a little bit so that they can see the feet. They're on a podium that should enable them to be able to see that. So, immediately we go to 130. Just to put this into context, the Commonwealth Games clean and jerk record set by Marcus Steven in Kuala Lumpur back in 1998, 167 kilos. And as I said, right at the beginning of this competition, we weren't expecting this division of the competition to produce anything like that. Who knows what we might get to later on this evening in the third session of the day. And Brown's being told by the technical controller to put his lifting suit on. Most lifters don't have the lifting suit all the way up in the clean and jerk in the warm-up. They leave it down around the hips. Well, the man in the hurry. Big hurry. I mean, he had bags of time. He had 36 no seconds. No lift. A majority decision by the referees. So no lift. So the same weight will remain on the barbell. So powerful. I think that might have been what resulted in that shaky jerk. It just was a little too light for what he was giving it in terms of power. It's why we have the three referees, ladies and gentlemen, because sometimes you can't see everything. That's why there's three pairs of eyes watching the majority I think a lot of that instability came from the shoulders rather than the elbows. Now, this man just really uses up time. It's his mental process which actually, actually in a way, slows him down. That's right. It only takes a few seconds to execute the lift, and you can see when he's playing it through in his mind, he's taking much more than that. And that was definitely... No lift. That was definitely all about his head. He jumped back. Clearly wasn't committed to the bar. He jumped back slightly, and that's why it fell off of his shoulders. Just having watched him in the first half of the competition and here now, uh, I'm thinking that he may not be the easiest of athletes to train. <laughs> uh, he's going to follow himself, and uh, at the moment, uh, 
He tells me after he's finished training and fighting fighters, he's too tired to have any hobbies. This man who is part of a 14 squad firefighting outfit. That's uh, his shift, by the way, in the Seychelles. At the moment, I'm not quite sure where he is, to be honest. Yes, he looks very calm. He doesn't seem like the kind of athlete that likes to excite himself a lot. You know, some athletes you'll see, they're really trying to pump themselves up, especially in the clean and jerk, which is a much more, as I like to say, kamikaze lift. You got to yeah. come out and just attack the bar. Yeah, but it's very interesting, you know, as his job as a firefighter, firefighters, you know, they assess risk. You know, they, they're very, very careful about how they work things out before, what, before they execute what they do. And it seems that maybe his day job actually affects his thought process. Hmm, that's an interesting point. But he's out again. His final attempt for one three zero. He's got 231. This is a five kilo increase to take him to, of course, 236. You can see he's getting his hands twitching there. That means he's getting a little more excited than the previous lift. Posted a really low entry total of 215. Ooh, he just got buried. Buried and the elbow was driven into the, the knee. And that is one of the other things that causes no lift. We don't see it nearly as often as a press out, but it does happen that elbow's touching the knee. Yeah, I, I personally think it's a silly move. Well, again, I know you're going to say, I know you're going to say safety. Safety, I am, because yeah. I've seen people break their wrists when they have their knee that, driven into their they elbow. Can, they can see it on the left arm there. Left elbow, I should say, touching that left knee. Yes. You know, it's a habit we really don't want athletes to adopt, so that's why that rule is in effect. Well, 231 it leaves him four kilos short of his personal best. Way ahead of the entry total. I'm a bit confused there. He entered 215, he's ended up 231. Almost suggests that they were worried when they put the entry total in that he wasn't perhaps going to perform to the max and they wanted to make sure that he wasn't going to get caught by the 20 kilo rule. That's right. Perhaps he's dealing with an injury. They wanted to give themselves a buffer. 20 kilo rule very quickly. The entry total you post, you have to finish within 20 kilos of that total. So, Naru, first attempt. Yeah. Working hard. Great timing. You see how his arms extended at the exact same moment that his feet landed on the ground. That's great timing. That makes the lift much easier. The same weight will remain on the barbell, 135 kilograms for Brown. So it takes him to 240, puts him into the overall lead. And. The bar is going to stay at 135, I think, for the next man. Brown Ramohaka for the Solomon Islands. I'm really happy to see that this athlete is going up five kilos despite the missed attempt at 130. I think if he just focuses, takes a split second more before trying to jerk that weight, he'll have this no problem. Such strong legs. Uh, got buried in that clean and stood up no problem. Not sure what happened. He's shaking his hand. Maybe he hurt his wrist. I think he's got a management issue here. I don't. I think on, on, on the snatch, you saw those first two explosive attempts there. He comes out here, but I, there's something that's awry here about the way he's going about his business. Uh, he's not adjusting. You know, he's everything seems to be a huge rush. He does not want to spend much time in front of this audience, that's for sure. <laughs> so, you know, a minute 47, he's got bags of time. He's going to come out and follow himself. And Lynn Jones quite rightly pointing out the... Uh, public address speaker here in the hall that of course he's under extreme pressure now because he's had two failures in the clean and jerk as you see the Englishman there 
does one check to the man from the Solomon Islands now. If he doesn't make this, then he doesn't get a total. And no total means no ranking. Yes, nobody wants to fly home from the Commonwealth Games without a ranking. Now, I just, I just sense here, I don't know, you know, you've coached a few. Or, 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 would you be just settling this down a bit? I think the main thing you, you got to tell an athlete is you just, this lift is a lift like any other lift, and it only takes one to get a total. Well, that was the best clean. Uh, a bit shaky on the arms, I wonder. Again, I think the instability is coming from the shoulders. That's yeah, what makes it look like a lot the... of movement. Yeah, it's the wobble, isn't it? That's right. But again, it's because he's so powerful. He's throwing that weight much further than his own arm's length. So that's why he's getting all that bounce back and that shaking in the shoulders. So, 2.35. He's also, by saving the day there, got a 10 kilo personal best in the total and exceeded his entry total by five kilos. Now, back to the Englishman. Just one. Shergill. He has a long way to lift this weight. Now, 30 seconds. Interesting to see once he gets on the shoulder. Will he slide the hands out to make the distance for the jerk shorter? <laughs> now, you can see the difference here. Wow, no time in between the clean and the jerk. So that jerk is very easy for him. You see that he got pushed to the bottom of that clean quite deep, but stood up no problem. In weightlifting, it's all about muscle quality, not muscle size. You see that Jazz doesn't have a lot of muscle mass, but he's clearly efficient. Is he going to have the leg strength to drive up, though, on the next two attempts? That's my big question for him. If you see him come out of that clean, he barely straightens his legs, and he's already dipping again for the jerk. As it gets heavier, that's a hard technique to make pass. We move to 140 for uh, King Kalu. Now, King Kalu did not have a happy time in the first part of the competition. Opened up on 105, then two failures at 110. The second one was just a lift thrown away. Uh, the third one, uh, well, there was press outs there clearly, so he's really playing catch up now. So the 140 that he's uh, going to come out for, this is five kilos up on his announced weight. He was going to come out at 135. So, big moments now. This is, in this first attempt, he's looking to make up five of the kilos that he lost in the first half of the competition. That's right, and we talk about how the difference between the snatch and the clean and jerk is the need for precision. This athlete's clearly powerful, and that's going to come into effect here in the clean and jerk. The 2013 Junior Commonwealth Champion. And he, he now has the total, which takes the pressure off. Now he can really focus on getting those extra kilos back that he lost in the snatch. Majority decision, though, again, uh, takes him to 245, second place at the moment, uh, the, uh, behind the Ugandan. The so I've been informed the jury has stopped the competition. Yeah. So this is your opportunity Have a to look at that uh, uh, left arm. Out. Well. And it's between our... Uh, uh, oh, yeah, here's a better so angle. Tell us what you think so far. Send messages to other people. You've seen them on the board. Okay. There it is. Can't board? really tell. It's on the board now. Get no, from this angle, again, it looks break. like the shoulders. It's really it's hard to tell. One. But if you're the center referee, 
you'd have a good idea of what went on there. So, question mark over this, all three referees being called up there. Now, from the front. Not the easiest clean, actually. Yeah, it didn't catch it that well. I'm not sure. Again, it's very hard to tell what the end range of the lockout is for this athlete. I think, I think one or two of them are saying, no, that's okay for me. I'm just looking at them on the screen here. But yeah, leave it. Exactly. Good decision. There was definite doubt there, and, and benefit of the doubt has gone to the athlete. That's what we want to see. That jury was not unanimously convinced. Surely, can't cancel that. Stays. If my lip reading is any good. <laughs> Fluent in hand gestures, I think that means the lift. I like this uh, jury president here, uh, Gary Marshall. I think he's doing things efficiently, and I think he's getting to the right decisions. Well, I think everyone's been informed that uh, they, they agree that it's a good lift after uh, discussions, so that the, the uh, lift stands for uh, 142 rounds. Uh, yeah, crowd are pleased about that. So, so he goes to 245, he's in second place. Uh, Gareth Evans about to uh, start here on 140. Now, Do you again, actually, this, yeah, you think he's coming out at this? Well, a, a big bold gesture because he'd be coming out on his personal best. And, uh, you know, Michaela Breeze during the uh, interval was talking about, you know, his opening weight in the snatch and saying she thought it was the 118 was a gutsy start. You know? Well, 140, and Gareth has put the weight up again, 145. So similar pattern, and it's going to be the Aussie to come out for 140. I I'm not particularly worried about Gareth Evans, you know, putting it up for the first attempt. I think it's uh, where he goes after that, once he's got that. That's what I think they've got to manage a little carefully. That's right, you do have three attempts, and it's not where you start that matters, it's where you finish. And if all you can get is your first attempt, it doesn't take you very far. So let's concentrate on Vanara. He's got a personal best of 145, so again, only five kilos short of that on his opener here. Three good <gasps> attempts in the snatch. Easy clean. And that's 256. That's a great lift, a great way to start the clean and jerk portion of the competition. You might have seen with us at half time in deep discussion with Simon and Yurik there about where they were going to go with this competition. It was a Really focused few minutes, and they were planning together. See, that's nicely on the shoulders, away from the windpipe. Yeah, that's a perfect rack position, we call it, which is where you want the bar to sit. You want it to feel like you don't have that much weight there when you're actually holding the bar in that position. But remember, these men are now lifting well over twice their body weight. So, now, just one, just. This gets tougher. From here on in, this gets tougher, 140. This for a seven kilo personal best. Ten seconds. That's a what very guts. hard clean. That was a grind. Unbelievable. Oh. That is all mental. This is one strong athlete. 
Well, he, he did 133 in the English Championships. That was a record, and he's now bettered it by seven kilos. And Coming out for another lift after that one won't be easy. Well, I don't think the clean was easy. No. <laughs> The jerk was pretty solid in comparison, but still, you know, that was a heavy weight. That was a lot of efficiency once again. Well, the way he operates here, he operates this almost as one movement. That's right. He's using that spring from the recovery of the clean to drive that bar right over his head. So, lies in second place to Bevanara or Banara Bay, I should say, for uh, Australia. He's on 256, Gareth's on 250, and uh, King Kalu on 245 at the moment, and now the man from Nauru who sits in fourth place on uh, 240, and the bar going up by six kilos. This uh, would take him to 256. Now, that is the same as Banara Bay. Uh, Brestefeld weighed in at 61.78, Venara Bay at 61.80. So, by a whisker, the lighter man, so this for the lead. 20 grams, half a chocolate bar. Oh, I don't think it's even that, I think, yeah, 20 grams, you're right. Great clean. Better than the first one. That was a much better lift all in all. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Absolutely good. You look at those quads, you know that guy can clean. And this is where it gets interesting because, of course, this is only the first half of this 62-kilo championship. It's the B division. So we're going to have to wait later into the evening to see how it ultimately unfolds. To be honest, these men shouldn't be challenging for medals. But, you know, every one of them there wants to be the best of this division. That's right, because when you come to the A group, you're going to have the top three finishers from the B group at the bottom of the scoreboard, and those athletes want to come watch a competition with their name on that board. So 142 kilos for Charles Shakaya of uh, the Ugandan team. This is his first attempt. Brings forward 113 kilos from the first half of the competition. He's got quite a wide grip now for the jerk. Almost the same as a snatch grip. Now he's helicoptered, but I think he's going to get that. Two to one, two to one decision. Yes, you are actually allowed to do a complete 360 or finish with your back to the jury, but you do have to get complete stability before you get that down signal. Now the jury want to have a... While the locals are checking the barbell, there's a time to... Uh... This does happen that the jury gets called, but not usually this often. No. They are real. You can see if you see your name up there, give us a cheer, so you know it's real. So please send those messages, and we'll see them on the board. If it stays, then he will maintain second place on 255 with two attempts left. I don't know, I'd, I'd quite like to see that again, just... just the replay, yes, yeah. I'd like to see that as well. Here we go. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Asked and answered now. Let's just have a look at this. In a way, I'm glad I'm not on that jury because I'd have probably given that. I think I would have too, but again, you know, we're watching from a screen and way higher up than they are, so.
My well, boys have a new C superhero, Jazz Shergill. That's what someone just tweeted. We love that guy. This yeah. is... Now, what, what a... Now they've taken it away from him. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, they've taken him away. Uh, the, uh, attempt, first attempt Toughest to call, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of 142 kilograms has been reversed. It was a no lift, a no lift. So therefore, 142 you know, kilograms. I think it's worth bearing in mind the jury really don't uh, like overruling Charles referees uh, because Uganda's what it does is it dents the confidence, the confidence of the referees. Yes, this, these referees are going to be a bit rattled today, having yeah. had so many decisions overturned. Because you sit there and you think, I've made an honest decision, I believe I was right, and now a couple of times they've been called up and questioned. And, some, and, and it, that's, as much as anything, why the jury you know, shouldn't and you know, do this too often, because uh, if, they, if the referees start to lose confidence, uh, then your competition can become a bit of a nightmare. And the athletes also start to lose confidence. Yeah. So he's got to come out again. He's only six kilos, say he's only six kilos short of his personal best, but that's a, that's a mental setback because I think, although it was a struggle, I think he thought genuinely that he'd achieved it. Yes, he definitely believed that he had it. And you know, six kilos isn't a lot when you're talking about 148 in, in terms of percentage. He's not that far off of his best here. But remember, he's been using energy. He's only got two attempts left. So he needs to do this with the minimum of fuss. Straight onto the shoulders. Good, strong drive. Better, much, much, much better. Much more efficient clean. There we go. Now, I think that's no all right. No question. Yeah, sure, three wides. Yeah. And they love it. And there he goes, smiling again. He has a great attitude. That wasn't an easy thing to come back and do. You'll also notice that he has a little Band-Aid on his neck there. That means the bar has ripped into the skin on his on his collarbone, and it does not feel good for him to be cleaning right onto that wound right now. Yeah, very stingy. Stings, yes. So he's got to make a decision, you know, because he's on 142, he's had a setback. Uh, does he try to maybe go 149? Would he dare put seven kilos on the bar for uh, the third and final attempt? Well, we know he can clean it. The question is, how will that jerk play out? Now, you just said that. If he can clean it, and we're talking about Jaswan Shegil there for uh, England. Now he's already set a new personal best in the clean and jerk. I think he'll get it to his shoulders. Will he be able to stand up with it is the question. But as some of his countrymen are saying, he's a new superhero. So if anyone can do it. So he's already on 250. He's already 10 kilos above his personal best total. This for five out of six, and lots of new PBs. Grinding it out. It's gonna be very hard for him to stand up now, now that he's been buried again. No. And he's acknowledged that it's nearly impossible. But you know, he's only been found out on those third attempts. That's right, and you know, he gave it everything he had. There was no question about the effort there. And that's the only thing you can control in this sport is what effort you give. So, he finishes... Uh, on... 10. Great technique. Can't be any more efficient than that. Just didn't have enough strength today to stand up with that clean. Finishes on 250, are currently in third place. And that's actually five kilos up on the entry total. So it's progression. It's headed in the right direction. Young lifter, plenty of guts, plenty of determination. More to come for him. Exciting to watch his progress for the future.
You know, and you have to keep this in context, you know, uh, this is why the Commonwealth Games Championships are so important to the 240 athletes, a record number of athletes. Actually, I think it's 235, but that's still a record uh, who are here because uh, not everybody can win the Olympics. Not everybody can become a world champion. Uh, you have arenas in which you can really achieve, and this is one of them for so many of these athletes. So, you know, Jaswin, he might well, in years to come, prove that the Commonwealth Games is going to be his happy hunting ground. That's right. So we're back to uh, King Kalu, 145 kilos on the bar, third and uh, second attempt. Oh, never caught it. No, that was high enough. It was powerful, oh, yeah. but apparently got into his head a little bit. He jumped back, He's wasn't like ready to commit and get right under that bar. Two out of five, you know, the stats are not going in his favor. For his first, uh, second attempt. And if you're wondering what's happened to uh, Gareth Evans, well, he's put up his opener to 147. He's absolutely determined, as he was in the snap, to be last man on the platform. That's right. Yeah, you know, but 147 is going to come out for a seven kilo personal best on attempt number one. That's a great way to start a competition especially if you're able to do two more solid lifts. But this man's been really on top form here by his account. Five kilo increase, 145. He's on 256. He is the current leader. This is to take him to 261. I thought that he was going to have that jerk the way he was poised, took a deep breath, nice and solid, big push, just a little bit in front. I was, I was watching Yurik Sarkassian and, uh, at the same time there. He was, he, he was actually repeating the lift in the wings. <laughs> Once a lifter, always a lifter. <laughs> so he still has the lead on 256 and he has uh, one more attempt to come, so it's, he's still vying for victory in this particular division. It's all going to be down to Gareth Evans, really, who didn't get away from the pack in the end. Now, the man from Nauru. Being coached by Paul Koffer and Ite de Tanamo, who was the flag bearer for Nauru at the opening ceremonies. So this is for 250. Hasn't quite lived up to his hopes and our expectations. No, he didn't get the weight he wanted there. You could see the bar moving quite slowly from the floor. There wasn't a huge change in speed after the knees. So he got buried pretty heavily there by that clean. Difficult to stand up. Not a huge change in speed we can see in the replay. And just lost momentum standing up with that bar. So Charles Sachaya for Uganda. He's got one attempt left. The bar's on 145. Clock is already counting down here now. And here he is. And his coach is trying to pump up the audience there. Now this is a three kilo increase to take him to 258. And into the lead. Such strong legs to come out of a clean like that. 
Oh, that's too bad. But again, he's all smiles. This athlete has a great attitude. Doing a little pose, flexing the arms, even though we know it's all legs and Olympic weightlifting. I really like how his coach came out, pumping his fist to Metallica right before the lift. They've got a great attitude and spirit. Well, Gareth Evans must wait a little bit longer. So, situation at the moment is that uh, Vanara Bay is the man who continues to lead the competition on 256. Now, even this effort from King Kalu, which is five kilos up on his achieved first attempt here, this would only take him to 250. 250 is uh, held at the moment by Jacinth Shegar for Great Britain. King Kalu weighed in at 60.39. So he's the lighter man. So this is, for the moment at least, to try and go into third place. And again, elbow on the knee, it's looking like, but still a very bold move to stand up with that clean. Yeah, the three reds are there. I think you got to let the athlete jerk it anyway. I mean, yeah. you only get so many lifts in competition. You know it's refused already, but let the athlete know yeah. if they're capable or not, you know? He's never left Africa before to compete. This is his first international competition. Oh, sorry, he did. Sorry, I didn't see it. Uh, so, therefore, Lodens, could we have uh, 145 now, kilograms to remain on the bottom? What's that? 145 kilograms. Definitely the left eye. And this will be for uh, Manara B. That is quite a grind. It's amazing that he got up with that lift. I would have really liked to see if he could jerk that weight. So it's going to be Vanara B who's going to I come out at... Uh, I'm not even convinced it. No, I, I just... Ooh, I think it grazed. Yeah. But when but you're it a wasn't, lifter... It wasn't, like, it wasn't like earlier where the elbow was absolutely on the kneecap. That's right. And when you're a lifter, you know you don't stop. Even if you do touch it, you stand up and you act like it never happened. you got to try to get that lift as best as you can. So here's the challenge. Uh, this is the man who at the halfway oh! stage was two kilos behind... Gareth Evans what? from Wales. He's on 256. He's looking for 261. He wants this jerk. He thought he had the last one. What? Same mistake, slightly in front. Heartbreaking after such efficient cleans to miss those jerks. Raise the barbell to 147 kilograms. So here we go, 147 kilos, a 7-kilo personal best. Now, we'll put this into context in a moment. You can see how hard he worked here. And it's his first hiccup, really, when you... Uh, sorry, his second hiccup in the clean and jerk. That 145 barrier proving too much for him. Well, here's Gareth now, 147, so this is to win the division. 147, this will give him a 267 total. Now, had this been a medal competition here, he would have come in a lot earlier. That's right, to secure the win. But as it is, what he really wants to do is to make an impression So 267, and just looking at this evening's entries total for the men's 62A division. Very easy clean. I was just about to say, oh, it's close to the windpipe. That's uh, caused him the problem there. 
Notice the same way to remain on the bar, though. Now, he has to follow himself, so this is a, not a comfortable situation to be in. I was going to say that 267 would have squeezed him into tonight's A group. Because the lowest entry total uh, was 265. That's right. In, in the A group, there's a much closer margin between the last athlete on the start list and the first athlete. Yeah, it's so. also much easier if you're in that A group because you know who you're fighting. You can see who you're fighting. That's right. You can take the exact weight you need to progress to the next rank higher. So again, you, you're sort of looking at it and saying, well, you know, was it necessary to come in, uh, you know, at, at 147? You know, why not come in at 145? You know, this athlete has a lot of experience, so clearly he thought he could go somewhere with starting at 147. He might have thought that he was capable of 157 today. And... Interesting, just looking at the clock here, because it hasn't actually started counting down. They're still loading the bar, yeah. tightening the collars. Yeah, but it was the same way. I mean, they, well, he, he's actually gained quite a few That's seconds. That's right, he sure did. Uh, I mean, they were, the loaders were slow, the checking was slow. So, hey, all in the lifter's favor, I'm for that. That's right. <laughs> So he's got a minute and three quarters. Uh, that's pretty good. You know, when you've had that pipe, the bar on your windpipe and being denied oxygen, every extra second you can get for recovery is really good. That's right. It does rattle you. It is uh, quite, it does throw you off to have to come back and lift right after that's happened. Because you never know when it's going to happen. It doesn't happen often, but it's just kind of a fluke, right, of where that bar landed in that moment. Okay, these guys now, they can come out now and treat this as a one, mi one minute lift. That's right. Well, I don't know whether daughter Lexi is managing to see this, but I, I bet there'll be a lot of come on, dad, you know, going on. That's right, for sure. He's her, his daughter's hero, no question. Yeah, you know, this is all about what he's put into the last 10 weeks. No painting, no decorating, just eat, sleep, drink, train, live, rest, sleep. Repeat. <laughs> so he's got over half a minute. That's fine. Needs to get to the platform now, I think. Give yourself enough time here, Gareth. He's aware. So this to win the 62 kilo B division and set a new clean and jerk personal best. Very efficient clean. And that's the jerk he wanted the first time. No problems there at all. And he will take the third attempt and why not? Because this is the opportunity for him to go further. So 265, I think I was saying 267. I kept imagining, because uh, he had 118 in the first part of the competition, I kept, I kept thinking it was the 120 that he'd actually got, but he didn't get that. So he's on 265. Now that does actually equal the lowest entry weight in this evening's competition. Yeah, there's actually three athletes lifted, listed at that weight out of 11. So, as we said earlier, there's a lot of traffic in that category. Well, knowing the way that uh, these competitions are organized, he would have squeezed himself in. But now he can justify being in there even more with what it goes to. Now, they've just put on a kilo on the bar. They're, they're not going to stop there. I wonder where he's going to go for. No, that was a quite easy, quite an easy lift. So clearly, they did have big aspirations starting at that 147 mark. I, I'm, I'm thinking 149. I, I think that's what they're going to go for. I'm old school, but I like to see five kilo jumps when lifts are easy. Mm. Uh, what you'd like to see him go to 152, would you? Well, Could that would 
Well, that would shake Even. up the that would shake up the class this evening, wouldn't it? I think so. Means, uh, you know, he could well be in for, uh, you know, a high ranking. Gareth, who was 12th in the Commonwealth Games in Delhi, uh, tonight's is quite a big field. Yes, we have 11 athletes. Three listed at 265, two at 270, 275. Everyone's really close there. So he's got 150, okay. So this will be for a 268 total. And that was his first change? Mm, was. Mm. And just to currently give you the other positions, uh, Vanara Bay of Australia currently on 256 in second place. That's where he's going to finish in this division. And uh, Charles Shakaya from Uganda on 255. Now. Now Gareth has the crowd clapping for him. He initiated this. He's getting the smelling salts and he's going for 150. I anticipate this is going to be just as easy as 147 was. Well, I hope so. I hope you're right. Because uh, I think it's going to add a little spice to the evening. He's definitely getting the crowd behind him right now. This is going to be a spectacular lift to finish off this B-group competition. So, born in Dundee, lives in Holyhead, 28 years of age. Once upon a time, at the age of 12, he was Britain's strongest schoolboy. The name is Gareth Evans. He represents Wales and already a massive a personal best in the clean and jerk he's got 147 that was a seven kilo personal best he had a three kilo personal best in the snatch so this for a 10 kilo personal best a total of 268 Finish it. And a super solid jerk. The crowd is really excited here at the Armadillo. Well, he knows where his friends, family, supporters are. He knows where the Welsh are. And they're all there. Yeah. The hands are aloft around the Clyde Auditorium. At the end of the day, he only made three out of six. But what matters is the weights that he lifted there. And 268 is a clean pair of heels to Vanara Bay in second place here on 256. And indeed, Charles Sakala of Uganda in third spot on 255. So great finish to this B division. Great atmosphere. Well done, Gareth Evans. Right up into the rankings in the A group. The second. Second place was 256 with an hour of B. There'll be a drink or two for you, Gareth, when you get back to Holyhead. You really can see what that means. I mean, you know that because you know when you've had to put that big effort in and you pull it off, you know what it feels inside you. Yeah, it's really hard to beat that feeling. After retiring from sport, I don't know what I can do to replace that feeling. And the president of the jury gives him a pat on the back as well. Thumbs up there from Dominic Durr, the doctor. So well done, Team Wales. Well done, Team Evans. Oh, now, Terrell, back in I'm sitting with my stone. No medal presentations. This, of course, is the B division, but it's been handsomely won by the Welshman. And their confirmation of the clean and jerk, you see, by eight kilos, the best man. And then you can see pretty tight between second, third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth there. And also a pat on the back there for Jaswant uh, Shergill, also uh, 
producing a new significant best in the clean and jerk there and much more to come from him he's just 21 years of age and now for the overall totals here they are 268 and you can see a 12 kilo margin there that's more than decisive tight between second and third then a five kilo uh, differential down to jazz in fourth place the man from naru not at the force we expect today at 246 but nonetheless respectable there and uh, uh, just a reminder of those top positions but this arena this morning has belonged to gareth evans of wales and i hope that you've enjoyed that as much as Jeannie lassen and myself david goldstrom and it's whetted your appetite to uh, join us for the women's 53 kilo final and the men's 62 kilo final a little later in the day